I think one of the coolest aspects of making these videos is that in just like the five or six months that I've been doing this, I've been able to meet a lot of different people all over the world and connect with, you know, new types of creatives, different people that are, you know, interested in design, animation, all sorts of different things. Um, just recently, I was reached out to by this guy named Chethan. He's from India and he's also a designer, very talented. And he's really good at uh, YouTube tutorials. So if you go to his channel, it's Devil Cube Designs. I should have a link in the description. He's got a really cool energy. If you watch his videos, he's super good at articulating what he's trying to say. He knows what he's talking about and he walks you through very clearly like, okay, from process A, B to C, like this is how we're gonna get this done. Um, he's kind of like me where He's a designer, but he also has that animation kind of background. So you'll see him animating UI, um, doing a lot of uh, Adobe XD things, Illustrator, Photoshop. He reached out to me on Twitter. He liked uh, what I was doing and wanted to collaborate. So the way we set it up, this is gonna be a two-part series. So you're gonna watch my video first. I'm gonna walk you through how to design an app, an interface, and then you're gonna watch Chethan's video, which I'm gonna have a link to in my description. That's the second part where he's gonna show you how to animate what I designed. I think what we came up with is pretty cool. So. I basically designed a interface for iPhone 10. It's basically kind of like a coffee shop finder app. So imagine you're kind of just hanging out at home. You want to go find a place where you can work and kind of get some free Wi-Fi, enjoy a cup of coffee. This is the app you would pull up to kind of discover new coffee shops in your, your area, your neighborhood. All right, so we're back in Sketch. Um, if you haven't used this software before, you should look at some of my other videos that I've made. Um, I've made one about a landing page and I've also made one about a mobile app um, with iPhone 7, I believe. So this one's gonna be for iPhone 10. Um, anyways, we're gonna get in this, uh, let's insert a new artboard. So let's go to insert, artboard. And over here on the right side, you're gonna see all these iPhone options. We're gonna go with iPhone 10, iPhone X. One thing different about the iPhone 10 that a lot of you already know is that it's gonna have that top notch here um, and the little bit rounded kind of corners here. So let's go ahead and insert that. So if we go to insert iOS UI design, let's go down to the iPhone 10. And I believe this is all available if you update your sketch uh, software. Um, let's go to iPhone X frame. to see how it gives me that little uh, frame that we can put in. Um, it basically just kind of follows your cursor until you click. So let's just go ahead and line it up here to the edge of this, uh, this artboard. And just click once there, it put it there on its own frame. So we've got our frame there and you can see it's rounded on the bottom too. So this pretty much like simulates what you'll see on screen. All this white area is what your screen real estate is. Um, so we've got this little annoying notch. I'm sure we'll grow to love it right now. It's kind of annoying to me, but oh well, more constraints to work with. Um, we also need to add in our, um, what do you call those things? Um, just like the uh, status bars. Yeah, let's add that. Let's add a, um, a black one so we can see what we're doing here. Something I've noticed with iPhone 10 apps, just kind of seeing some things on Dribbble and looking at other designers kind of approaches is that people will put like a big headline title here for um, an app page. Cause you're not really, with this notch up here, people aren't really putting their titles of their pages up here anymore. Just because you have so much more space to work with I've just seen it as a trend lately that people are putting big titles here. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to be our discover page. So let's go ahead and add a headline that says discover. So let's grab our text and just drag this and let's just type discover. So maybe this is like the search page where you would find um, multiple coffee shops in your area that you want to check out. Maybe go have a cup of coffee. Um, and let's go to our typeface. Let's go to something a little bit more like serif vibe so i'm kind of thinking like a sophisticated trusted serif font that makes you feel like it's kind of like a warm coffee shop vibe so i'm just going to kind of go through here and see what stands out to me um maybe like a big caslon or like a basker maybe bedoni bedoni looks cool and let's just go to bold um right now we're at 42 let's let's maybe try like a 50. yeah that seems kind of cool I'll grab Alt and Shift and just duplicate this. And then let's bring this down in size, so like a 18 maybe. And I wanna change this font. Let's just go with something simple, kind of a, a, a sans serif font, a veneer. And then let's get rid of this heavy. Let's go to like a book. So discover coffee shops in San Diego. And I might make this color a little bit lighter since this is like our subtext to be a little bit lighter. Um, 
And maybe San Diego is like the highlighted city at this time, so we can make it a different color. Maybe you have the option to change this. Let's go down to like a, like a burnt orange or something. Yeah. And I might even, I might even make this a little bit more bold just because it, it is the selected state. So maybe like a medium. There, so it's like, I imagine like discover coffee shops in would always be there and then this could change. So let's go ahead and make a little like drop down arrow so, so somebody could click on this San Diego text. Let's go to insert shape and let's go to triangle. Let's just draw this guy right here, maybe like seven by seven. Get rid of the borders. Let's grab our eyedropper color picker and go to our burnt orange color. And then let's just flip this around and move it over here a little bit. If I double click, I'll get the option to move these points. I'm just gonna move this bottom point up a little bit just so it's more of like a, a you know, not as pointy triangle. Let's see how that looks. There, now that looks like a drop down that somebody could click on. So imagine like somebody clicked on San Diego and then you have Los Angeles, San Clemente, Dana Point, all these different cities that you could discover coffee shops in. Since this is a discover page, I think we should have like a search functionality. So maybe there's like a search bar here so a user can click in and, you know, type in exactly what they're looking for. So let's go ahead and go to insert shape rectangle. And I'm just going to I'm just gonna kind of come to the edge of this and just draw this rectangle across. And I always like to keep pretty much like even numbers for the most part. So like, let's see, three, let's do like 330 by 50. And that'll give us like a nice size here. Um, let's get rid of these borders. And then let's just go 100% white. Now, you can't see that right now because I didn't change the background color, but let's go ahead and grab our artboard. So if you click where this iPhone X title is, it'll give you these options. Let's turn the background color on and let's just go like a kind of like a really soft gray. That way you can already see this white is kind of appearing more from that background. I'm just going to rename this rectangle like background search just so that I don't get confused later. And I always like to build my layers in order. So titles is before the search bar. So it should be above it in the layers panel. I should also move these guys up and then just lock them because I don't really need to, to touch these. So um, I believe if I right click lock layers, see it gives us a little lock, cool. And let's just round these corners on the search bar a little bit. So maybe about, let's do like a four. So you can see how the radius of the corners got rounded just by doing that. Um, and then I wanna add like a subtle shadow to this. So let's go to the bottom here where it says shadows. Click the little plus, and that's kind of harsh, so I'm just gonna play with this. I'm gonna bring this up to a softer color, and I might play around with the blur settings, maybe like a 20, or maybe like a 25. So we're getting some of that soft color, and then we can also bring down this little transparency right here. And, you know, you could spend a lot of time on these shadows. This looks pretty good for now. Um, just a nice little soft kind of like illusion of it popping off the page a little bit because we want that to kind of seem like it's it's a main element, a main feature that somebody can interact with. And I'm just going to go to the top here and just kind of line these up and let's just bring it down like, let's see, one, two, three. So 30 pixels down. Now that we have our background, we can make a little search title here. So let's grab this this text, Command C, click on this, Command V. So that basically, because I selected it, puts it right on top. And then let's just grab our text, whoops, and just bring it down. We don't need this orange anymore. So let's just put search. And then maybe decrease the size of our font to like a 16. And because this is our search bar, we don't need this, this text as dark, so let's just bring this up a little bit. Yeah. Move it over. I think I want to add like a little search, like magnifying glass. So 
You've probably seen this in some of my other tutorials where I make one of these, but it's pretty simple. Just go to shape, oval, we'll zoom in, and just shift drag, maybe like 15 by 15, we'll get rid of the fill. And our border, we're gonna sample the same color that we have here. I might actually be kind of big, like, let's go like a 12. Insert shape line. Let's just draw a little line here holding shift. And then let's just sample that same color. So I'll grab this whole icon and I'll right click and I will go to group selection. Let's just call it ICN search. And then I will center it within this box with my align tool. So we're gonna go to this align vertically. That's now it's perfectly aligned in the middle here. And then we'll just bump our search over a little bit. There we go. So let's group all these together. Right click group selection and we'll just call it search bar. And we're gonna move it below titles cause we're going in a chronological order here. So now we have our title and we have a search bar. So somebody could click into this and like type in a keyword. So now that we have this kind of title drop down and then our search, let's add some cards that somebody could click through if they want to discover um, different coffee shops that way. So let's grab our background of our search bar, copy it, we'll close this up now, and we'll hit paste. Oops. And we're going to call this background card. It's always good to label your layers so you don't get confused later. And then for our width, let's just go, let's say 290, see how that looks. Let's just bring this down because I want another card to kind of peer off the edge here so you can see that there's some kind of interaction that could happen. We're kind of like giving the, the user a visual cue of what's uh, available to them. So that's always kind of helpful. So let's grab this card. I want to round these corners a little bit more, make this more of like a approachable kind of fun card. So let's try like a 10 radius. Yeah, it's cool. And I've got some images here that I found of some different coffee shops in San Diego. This is Coffee and Tea Collective. Let's just drag this in here. This is gonna be our first card. And let's just shrink this down. Now, I wanna make, I wanna mask this image within this card. So let's grab this card, copy it, edit, paste in place, or just edit, paste. It should paste it in place. And then let's just bring this up. And we want this to be a square, so let's do 290 by 290 and let's go ahead and remove the shadow and then I'm gonna make it black just so I can see and we don't want these bottom corners to be rounded so if I double click on my mask I'll click this little circle and I'll click this little circle holding shift so I get both of them and let's just take the corners off all the way so zero and see now it's like nice and flush there but we still maintained our roundness at the top so that's a nice little trick if you want to Kind of do something like that. Um, so let's grab our image and our newly created mask and like just right click on both of those and click mask. Now what happens if I scale this up holding alt and shift it will stay within this newly created mask. So you're starting to see how this is turning into a card so maybe we can have some text down here and then you would click on this entire thing to open it. I'm thinking she can probably do some cool stuff where maybe if you click on this perhaps the whole thing can kind of grow and like go to the top of the page or something. I don't know, I'll leave it up to him, but. All right, now let's add some text to this card. Let's grab our discover title, copy it. Let's go back to our card and let's just click paste. It usually will paste it in the same spot that you had it last, so you'll just have to move it down. Um, so let's just make this a little bit smaller, maybe like a 30. And let's just write coffee and tea. I spelled coffee wrong. Coffee and tea collective. That still seems a little big for me, so maybe like a 22. And then let's just center these guys. So let's go to our alignment, click center, and then let's shift click onto the card and let's also align with this. And there, that's perfectly centered within that card. So we've got our title here. Maybe we want some sort of design element that kind of brings in this, uh, this burnt orange again. So. I'm almost thinking like, uh, just looking at this little guy, maybe some kind of cool like little zigzag or something. I don't know. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do that in Illustrator. Um, I'm gonna grab a line. I'm gonna drag this across and I'm gonna go to like three point size. And we'll zoom in. Screw it, I'll do like a five. And then I'm gonna go to Effect and we're gonna go to Distort and Transform, Zigzag. Let's hit Preview so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm just gonna play around these sliders Maybe add more segments. And maybe like eight or seven. Seven seems cool. No, let's do nine. Hit OK. And I'm just going to go object, expand appearance, expand. OK. There, now it's a graphic. So let's just grab this, copy it. And what's cool is you can you can paste these vectors into Sketch. So I'll just paste this in, and now we have a vector in Sketch. Voila. Oops. And I might actually flip this now that I look at it. And let's just grab our orange color. So now we have this kind of cool little little design element here that we can use just to kind of break things up. And let's just center it, center line. And I'm probably gonna put it maybe like 20 pixels. Eh, maybe 10 pixels. And now we need one more piece of uh, information here. Let's put the location of where this is. So this is in North Park. So I'm just gonna grab my coffee shop text Copy it, come down here, paste. Let's delete the San Diego. And let's just type North Park. And we'll center this. Make sure it's aligned. This might be a little big. Let's do like um, 16, uh, maybe 14. So this is looking pretty cool. I might space these out a little bit more just to give them a little bit more breathing room. But I will select all these and I'll group them. Let's just put info and let's just put it in our card. And this is our first card that we made. Let's just, um, let's make this a symbol so that we don't have to worry about, you know, if we make any changes on any of this info, it can be updated across all these cards. So if we make a stylistic change or just some sizing, or anything like that with colors, it'll update all the other cards that we've made. So let's just right click and go to create symbol. And we'll just keep it, um, we'll just call it card. Hit OK. Now if we duplicate this, do one, two, three. I'll just show you if we, if we wanted to make another one. So if I click on this, you see these overrides over here? I can update this image now because it's a symbol. So I've got an image. Let's put um, let's put the wholesome coffee one in. See, look, it just updated it for me. It's magic. Let's do the same thing with our text. So let's put a uh, wholesome coffee. Bam. It's also in North Park, so we'll leave that as is. But let's make one more for James. We're doing them 30 pixels apart from each other, so I just line it up on the edge, make it flush. Hold shift and my right arrow, one, two, three. We'll slide all these guys down together just so I can see what we're doing here. Let's change this image. Let's make this our James. Uh, we'll do that image, I like this little owl. So there's our James Coffee. Let's change the name to James Coffee Co. And I believe they are located in Little Italy, so let's change that. This is what I love about overrides. It just makes life so much easier for you. So now we have three cards that all share the same styling and we only had to make one. For the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and build out the rest of this page. Uh, I'm gonna speed this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but I'm basically just gonna make this navigation bar at the bottom here.
So I've got both pages designed here, and this is the page that would happen when you click on one of those cards, and you're basically brought to this page to get more information about the particular coffee shop that you selected. So in this case, somebody clicked James Coffee Co., um, and you've got more information here. So the vibe, a hip local chain doling out coffee and espresso-based beverages crafted from house-roasted beans. And you've got their address and their hours and their distance from you. So. Obviously you could probably make this a little bit more detailed and probably have like things like, do they have Wi-Fi? is it dog friendly, things like that. But for this demonstration, we're just kind of keeping it simple so that Chethan can kind of demonstrate on his end how you would animate all this. So what we have to do now is make every single element on this page exportable. So to do that, let's just say we want to export this, this icon. You come down to the bottom right here and it says make exportable. Click the little plus. It's pretty simple. And in this case, we only want to we only want to uh, export one size for Chethan. Normally, you can do multiple sizes, so things for like Retina and different screen densities for Android, you can specify in one click all the sizes that you want to export. So it'll literally one, two, three, four, five, five files will get exported if you selected all those. We're just going to go to this little filter thing though, and we're going to go to default and we're just gonna keep it at one point or one time size as a PNG. So I literally, now, now that that's set, that's good to go. I need to do that for every single element. So make exportable, filter, default, cool. Same with the text. Um, normally in After Effects, you could just retype this in the software, but we're just gonna make everything nice and flat for Chisun to animate everything independently. So if you're gonna, you're gonna watch his, uh, you're gonna watch his tutorial and he's gonna have all these files nice and neat separated from me. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and leave some comments. Let's get a little creative discussion going.